it seems like one significant <coughs> figure, though, at least in the bonds, is that it has to do with the figure of the author, right? I mean, that when one sort of assigns or consigns one's body to von Hagen, it's not to science, right? <laughs> it's not like, you know, some sort of nameless mass will then take my body and use it in various different ways. I'm going to give it to this guy, and mm -hmm. I can trust this, I mean, the Steve Jobs sort of figure, right? I mean, I can trust him to deal with my body through a process that I've seen and vetted, you know, and sure prisoners of me, <laughs> or it's been sort of like misapplied, but mine will be the ethical case. Um, so I wonder if perhaps also that popularity has to do with the sort of simultaneous awareness of the kind of crowd complex. I mean, that's the experience of walking through mm -hmm. the exhibit, mm -hmm. right? These, this is my body, and these are all sort of identical to me, where of course, sort of just mm -hmm. down to this anatomical level. Um, you can sort of project death, but project it through an identifiable face. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think of that sort of? I don't know. Is that a question? <laughs> I, don't, I guess. Well, I guess it was just sort of like, what about the author? That would be the question. Like, what do you think about the figure? Yeah, you, of the you author? mean like um, thinking of Van Hagen as being sort of an author of, mm -hmm. of these works of art? Yeah. There's, well, there's this idea that you give him your body and you achieve some form of notoriety, even after you're dead. Although you're going to be anonymous. So th there's a, a very complex sort of postmodern package of you know the author's dead. No, he's not. He's the, you know. This kind of paradox, the, or tension, if you will, between you know the effacing, self-effacing author, the, the the reception is the rewriting of of the role of the author. So, yeah, it, it's tremendously complex. I would like to myself read more of those forms that people fill out in their reasons, their complex reasons yeah. for wanting to be plastinated, yeah. you know, peeled and proud. Preferentiality <laughs> <laughs> maintained, or I mean, are the bodies? No, 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 no. You, you yes. give him your body, yeah. and you know that you'll be plastinated. But there's no like little sign that says, you know, Joyce Goggin. Right, I, I wonder if he keeps record. Like, you know, mm -hmm. but I wonder if they were tagged. Or if well, there's this like, mutual one. I, or if I he think, mixes and matches that I, I, I think it depends <laughs> as well <laughs> yeah. on Why his not? body, Why like not? his best friend, who he yeah. plastinated. Mm -hmm. And you know, if he plastinates his wife or whatever, you know, like I'm sure he'll know those ones, and they'll have like a special place, yeah. and you know, some very sentimental little, you know, little, little scenario. <laughs> but I, I would suggest that you know, the prisoners and the homeless people and the mental patients, they go into like a big generic pool. Yeah, I was interested in your mortality tables that you wrote oh, yeah. earlier in terms of looking at uh, gambling and insurance. Because, you know, to follow on Lindsay's point, it seems like now mortality is almost surplus life, right? I mean, you, there's no, you don't know what mortality is. Mm. It could actually, I'm, I'm not saying that we don't die when we're 90 or whatever, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's increasing. So I'm just wondering if that, there's a certain virtuality to mortality itself that adds to this difficulty of actually mm. having an actuarial. Sure, yeah. You know, table yeah. that can stabilize the kinds of bets that you make. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, ninety is the new fifty or whatever, yes. right? Um, and I also think it's interesting that that eighteenth-century actuary figure was yeah. maintained until the nineteen twenties, till somebody said, "Hey, wait a minute, this is pretty old." Um, so I imagine that they have to adjust it fairly regularly as people supposedly live to be longer and longer. Do they still use them? Those actuary tables, yeah, they probably, they have an algorithm now that they use that's based on, you know, the work that people did by hand in the 18th century and, and then constant adjustments that they've made over time, trying to take into account the fact that people supposedly live longer. Or maybe we'll all just live forever. Live forever. <laughs> What is the relation to this in the bodies exhibit? That's a, have you heard of the bodies capital? Yeah, have you? But this, I think so. Is this, this the same? Is, the is, is this the same? Is this the same? No, it was just called bodies. Same, I think it's two or three. Okay, yeah. Uh, 
Well, it's the same. Yeah, it's the okay. same thing. It's it, it's called. He calls it sometimes. It's well, body okay. works, and it's you know the dude on the bicycle, and the, you know it's various installations. And that isn't sold as art when you see it on the subway. It's kind of. A, I think that's a different one actually. It may, is it? It is sometimes. But what I was trying to say at the beginning of my talk is that. He has a really problematic relationship to himself <laughs> in that, you know, sometimes he wants to be an artist and he yeah. does all this stuff with trying to look like Joseph Boys and stuff, um, and he'll call himself an artist, and then sometimes he'll switch hats depending on who he's talking about and say, well, you know, it's not about aesthetics, it's really about science and, and you know, people claiming to learn so much more about their bodies than they knew before, which I find that hard to believe. That I think Kevin's referring to is pedagogic or set up as pedagogic. Right. So that might be one of his. I don't know. If one of his yeah. hats. The one I, I mean, I yeah. saw the one that the Luxor, and it was like embryo themed, and it was all about the beginning of life and within the uterus. That's the one where he has the cross section of the pregnant woman. Yeah. Right? That yeah. Upset a lot of people. Yeah, and he's got embryos at various stages of development, yeah. and then a newborn baby. And he's got. I was just reading from the Wikipedia article <laughs> after 1995 when he did his first public. Well, actually, this is a uh, museum uh, uh, culture dimension to this as well, since uh, this is the same circuit of shows that uh, Fossil Beach, for example, and King Cut's Mummy yeah. and so on. It's, and uh, you know, if you look at the uh, art of fascination in, uh, in Wikipedia, it begins with, of course, the prehistorical reference to mummification processes. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he's got all different kinds of strategies to sell himself. And in this Bond movie, you see him get, James Bond gets out of a car and goes to body worlds. And, and that's how he ends up at this particular little exhibit. And, you know, there's a key left under the car and so on. Then James Bond stabs a guy back. <laughs> that idea of museumification and mummification and just art in general, you know, the platonic being of art is obviously in contrast to, interestingly to what you were saying about the constant becomingness of money and it's constantly in flux and it can't be pinned down. I don't know if there's a relation there with that. With what? With the fact that the, the the economy is seen as this constant state of flux and becoming and being immaterial, but here you have the very materiality of the body, but you also have this frozenness of time, this eternal presence, as you said to uh, yeah. gambling was. But that, that was exactly my whole point right. in the paper, and I, I originally called it, I, I confess I've given this paper before, but my original title was, um, My Future's So Bright I'm Already Dead. <laughs> so, you know, like, it, exactly, there's this, there's this kind of frozen moment, but then it, it appears to be, you know, perpetuated, that, that, that this could go on for perpetuity, and this, this idea that this is a moment arrested, but it, it could, these people could well go on playing cards, through your imagination. Yeah, that, that was exactly what I was thinking. I was just curious about whether they I haven't, I'm not very familiar with this work. Do they tend to be given these sort of individual characters? Because in this scene, if I walked into this, I think I'd be drawn to thinking about each body as an yeah. individual person. And that, in some ways, I wonder if that could be a way of contradicting this logic that makes everybody anonymous and that refuses to think about the death of the individuals who died so that were, bodies were harvested for this work. I mean, I don't know if that's in general keeping with, it, but with the way he poses these bodies. Yeah, there's this constant tension between the complete anonymity of the subjects and then, you know, this, this kind of homey, hey, these guys could be playing cards, look at this guy, he's riding a bike here, you know. So, so that they, they do have this kind of kitschy, personalized thing. At the same time, they're completely anonymous because you don't know who it is, yeah? Um, this is, you know, I think he's, you know, ratcheted it up a notch with this kind of stuff right here. Um, so yeah, he's, he, he's got several things going on. He's an artist, he's an anatomist, he likes to wear these different hats, and you know, he has different size installations. He's a capitalist. He's oh, an yeah. entrepreneur. <laughs> he's talking, yeah. Uh, well, when he starts talking about we can now make, um, you know, larger quantities of the product available on the internet, and you know, like, 
Yeah, it's pretty scary. It's on the internet, it is, right? Yeah, and then slicing them. So you, you can buy a set of slices as well. And just, you know, you can buy the whole set. Kind of extension pack logic. 